definitely, um, I think it's, it's an interesting time. I think it's definitely revealing a lot of things about different cultures and, um, you know, I, and even some of the practices, right. I think, you know, we're, we're very, um, you know, we, 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 you and I, we're both huggers, right? We're, mm-hmm. we're all very, oh, for I think, sure. <laughs> uh, I think um, we're all very well aware of some of our um, interpersonal like habits now. Oh, yeah, um, dude. Like how much of an affectionate hugger I am. It's really there. I'm about to hug random strangers in the supermarket and shit. Like you, you trying to get some of this? I'm trying to like sell it like it's drugs and shit. It's like, yo, you trying to get some of this hug real quick? Like maybe behind this alley, bro. And let me let me see what's up. And you know what I've realized too that I have to be very very like mindful and conscious about. And a lot of people have been asking me to talk about this situation specifically when it comes to like you know a lot of hate that of you know Asian Americans have been getting. And um, the reason why I haven't done a podcast on that yet, and I and I think I am going to start doing podcasts about it. And I'm gonna start calling it uh, the, the 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 whole segment is just gonna be called Coughing While Asian. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And the reason why is because I want to be very careful about how I, what I say and how I feel about things, right? Because I don't want to right. come off as somebody who's just getting caught up in whatever the media says. And, and sometimes like when I see the plight of somebody who looks like me and what they're going through and I start putting myself right. in their place, I start getting fucking angry, right? And I have to be yeah. very careful with that voice sometimes because I, I could get on the other side and just start mowing people down because, you know, just for an, an example – you know, I've been walking around. I walk around in this area called South Pasadena. South Pasadena, you went jogging there. It's nice as fuck. Yeah. Super yeah. diverse. Everybody waves and says hi to you. It's just, it's just really dope. And But ever since the COVID situation, I've had so far three instances where people treated me like shit. And that's never happened before. Like, and Really? Um, I have never – I've never had that shit happen to me, you know, specifically in South Pasadena. Like, for example, we were – I was at – um. Uh, La Manarca, I think I took you there. It's that it's the, uh, yeah, the Mexican yeah, yeah. coffee shop, right? Really right, dope. Right, right, right. You know, and I told you, and I, and I might have told you this, but it was it was that lady who said you people to me, and she was like, "This mm. shit is happening because of you people." Now, mind you, she might have said like it's, people who are social it's, distancing. It's but, never a good idea to say the term. Yeah. <laughs> Just PSA for everybody listening. <laughs> Never a good phrase. Just, yeah. just don't lead with your people. You know, yeah. it's like, she's like, is that like, because of you people? And I heard that shit, and I was like, you know what? You might have met people who aren't social distancing. However, I ain't take it like that, <laughs> you know. And you know, long story short, with this, I'm not gonna go. I'll, I'll tell the whole story in another podcast. But you know, the manager stepped in, and she kind of kicked her out. And I had to sit there, and I was like, yo, I've been living in this nice, like Pasadena, super diverse area for the longest fucking time. Right. Right. Been here for about six fucking years. Never had a single instance where somebody said you people at me or looked at me like I was an outsider. Never, ever had that fucking experience before. Yeah. And then and this is what we're talking about when we talk about the rhetoric, specifically coming from the president of the United States, when he says a phrase like China virus. Right. 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 Um, And people don't understand how how powerful those words are and how it gives a green light to other people who've already had these these bigoted feelings towards a culture, right? And they never really felt the strength or the power to say it because it's been in their fucking mind for a long fucking time. But when the president gives you strength to say that, that's when you have an instance like me where I've been in South Pasadena for six years, one of the most diverse, nicest places I've ever been. And somebody looks at me at the coffee shop that I go to on a daily basis and says, it's because of you people. And I sat there and, I'm, you know, at first I kind of laughed about it, which, you know, as a comic, I, I, I wrote a whole sketch about it. But then afterwards, I'm like, hey, fuck this bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. I'm like, yo, fuck you. You know, and I was like, yo, I, I'll fucking slap the fucking shit out of you. Right. And it yeah. kind of opened up this whole conversation. And especially for a lot of Asian Americans, for you to really think about this. And I, and I talk about this, too. My best friend, he's sitting across from me right now on this video conference. He's he's an African-American male. Right. I grew up in uh, a very diverse area, black community, Asian community. Right. So, you know, the the I call it, you know, the the black American plight is not something that's foreign to me. Right. I've seen it with my own eyes. Like I've seen disparity. I've seen this shit my whole life. So when people talk about black American issues, I tend to feel a certain way about it because I grew up around this community, right? Like we've, we, we were around each other my whole life. And so sometimes I think the one positive thing that came out from this is that there, I know there are a, maybe a handful of Asian Americans that see this and they saw when the whole Trayvon Martin thing came out, right? All right. And for other people too, like in, in my Asian American community, when you saw this Black Lives Matter movement, and I'm not, I'm not saying that a lot of people that I know didn't believe in that shit, but there were a handful of it, right? 
But that moment I heard that you people, even though I understood what that you people phrase was said when it was said to another culture, like the black American culture, when it was said to me, I was like, it clicked even harder. It's like, how fucking dare you? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what did I do? Who, what, what did I do? You know, and it right. kind of made me sit there. I was like, a little frustrated with it. I was like, oh, so this is, this is what, this is what the black American community is talking about right now. And you never really know. And then the, the, a few, a few weeks after that, when I was walking this, this old lady, she had a little fucking rake and she was like, I don't see you wearing a mask. Make sure that you stay away from me. And I was like, hold on a second. And so I was like, okay, I wasn't wearing my mask when I was walking, but I was clearly like 12 feet, 15 feet away from her, right? And I right. started walking by and I saw this other white couple going by. They weren't wearing any mask. They were right next to her and she goes, good morning. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this is fucking interesting. And I wanted yeah. to sit there and I'm like, damn, this doesn't. And it got to a point where I saw it repetitively, right? So there was this other time where this guy was walking a little too close to me and he was kind of like being an asshole about it. And I already cursed somebody out. I already cursed that lady out in the in the in the coffee shop. I already had it. And now I start to realize where sometimes you all you all you can do is just roll your fucking eyes and you get fed up with the shit. It's like, what am I supposed to do now? Am I gonna sock everybody that comes my fucking way? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you get tired. You um, get tired of the shit. Yeah. I, you know, it, it, it's it's hard, man. I think um um, it reminds me, what is it? The Martin Luther King quote, like injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's, um, and, it, and you like to think that we're in the year 2020 and some of the, you know, we're, we're in California. It's one of the very progressive, uh, you know, blue states. Um, but, you know, we're also a, a, a state that imprisoned a large part a portion of our Japanese population, you know, mm -hmm. after Pearl Harbor, you know what I mean? And, and you like to think that um, th this, these knee jerk reactions of uh, stereotyping and, um, and, and, and hate uh, won't happen, but no, it's, they, they happen and they've been happening here. They've been happening globally. Uh, what is the black people in China too? were like getting like, you know, turned away from McDonald's. And, yeah. they're, they, and I was like, I was like, that is wild. Anyways, it's, you know, it, and it's these things where um, you like you have to be right. Like I don't know. Like these things happen, but I think it's we we have to like join together and stand up for each other and mm -hmm. and make sure that when you know we all all we all are dealing with a very like present threat, but it doesn't mean that um, we lose some of that camaraderie between groups and 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 and. And just being an ally, you know, if it's not your group, if it's not your person, it's being like, hey, no, that's that's messed up. Like, yeah. And I was and, and I have to not get caught up in that shit because I also have to mention, too, on these walks, there are the <laughs> you know, I could tell like some of these white people, they're like super sensitive to the situation. They look me in the eye and they're like, good morning. <laughs> you know, they want, right, they want to right. make sure like, hey, you're safe with us. And I, and I got to say that even though I'm talking about three situations where that negative thing happened, there were still about 90 or 100 more situations where there was a white person that came up and they said, good morning to me. They said, hello, they smiled at me. Right. So I got to make right. sure. And I want, and the reason why I'm bringing back this whole thing of being careful about what I talk about when it comes to these situations, I can't let three fucking assholes represent the other 99% of the people that I met that day. Right. And that's right. the hard part, right? I think that's the hard part for a lot of people. You see stuff in media, you, you, you have these bad instances with a specific culture, but you have to look at the, I look at the numbers. It's like, listen, if that's three people out of like, whatever, 100 or 200 people that I saw in the last week, then who am I to go in here and judge this whole group of people from these one, from these few individuals who made that mistake, right? But it doesn't make me want to sock them in the fucking face. My God, I just wanted to just, ooh, I could just strangle you, bitch. Oh my God. Yeah, no, I've, I've had some positive experiences with people. So I think, yeah. I, I think even though like you, what you say is true and there are people who are being horrible to each other and people who are hoarding toilet paper, for no good reason. I don't know why. Watch um, your ass. There, there have been a lot more. I don't know. There's a lot more kindness, I think, in the streets. And I think that sometimes yeah. when something like this happens, you do have uh, people like, you know, it's it's almost like they don't sweat the small stuff anymore. So yeah. it's so it's like, hey, you know, like this like familial beef that I had with you over whatever like no, we're just we're just worried about everybody being safe. We just want you know mom and dad to be safe. We want our kids to be safe. Make sure we got enough food. Like 
I'm not even beefing about that twenty dollars you owe me. I mean, let me catch you in August. Yeah, like, look, twenty dollars. Yo, <laughs> you know? yo, when this pandemic's been over, it's gonna be back. But for now, just be safe. But you give me that twenty spot. <laughs> yeah, 